All right, so good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 Spring Difference Maker Kickoff and ID Hack event. My name is Holly Lalos, and I'm the Program Director of Difference Maker. And thank you all for joining us this evening. So just a quick overview of the agenda, uh, which Professor um, Brent Shell will share via the chat. First, we'll start off with a quick kickoff and some introductions. We have uh, Provost Hartman here with us today to do some welcoming remarks. Then we'll talk a bit more about Difference Maker and the Idea Challenge. We actually have two past Difference Maker student teams that will be joining us and presenting about their experiences with Difference Maker. And then we're going to end with a fun uh, ideation activity where you get to meet people and talk about your ideas. So I'm sure a lot of you know what Difference Maker is, but just to kick off the event, Difference Maker is UMass Lowell's campus-wide entrepreneurship program. So if you have an idea, you can come to Difference Maker and we'll give you resources to pursue that idea. And if you see some type of problem that you want to solve, you come to Difference Maker and we support you through solving that problem. So I do want to start um, I always like to start by giving a shout out to our faculty fellows who are really instrumental in mentoring students and acting as advocates for Difference Maker within their college. So we have Mazen El Ghaziri from Health Sciences, Mark Hughes from Education, Aman Shaheen from Education, uh, Carter Keough from Engineering, Kathy Levy from Fine Arts, Hunter Mack from Engineering, we have Rachel Mansfield from the Honors College, Brent Schell from Health Sciences, Neil Shortland from Fine Arts, Tom Wilkes from the uh, Sciences, Kevin Willett from the Business School, and Kalila Wolkowitz from Engineering. So I wanna thank you all for being here this evening and also for staying and helping with the activity later on. And of course, I wanna give a thank you to the Difference Maker team, Steve Tello, the Vice Provost of Graduate Professional and Online Studies, uh, Jackie Buckley, who works closely with me and Steve to help with some Difference Maker events and details, uh, Graham Allen and Adam Dunbar, who really help with all the IT and the Zoom setup and the events. Adam is actually the person behind the scenes today helping with this event. So a special thank you to Adam. And then of course we have our risk difference maker co-op students who help with classroom visits, help with events, and are also just a great addition to our team. Uh, Victor, Lena, Adam, and Yiharn. And now without further ado, I would like to uh, welcome Provost and Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs. Um, Provost Hartman has just been really awesome in supporting Difference Maker and our students, uh, especially during these pandemic times. He's been a great leader for UMass Lowell and for Difference Maker. So please join me in welcoming Provost uh, Joe Hartman. Thanks, Holly. I appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, picture with the tie. I can hardly remember how to <clears throat> button one of those uh, anymore. I kind of kind of like this laid back look here on Zoom. but. Thank you, uh, Holly, for your continued uh, leadership in the program. You know I'm a big fan. I, I just love to, uh, we bring our faculty and our students together and solving uh, the, the, the problems that the students come up with and all that energy. And I can't wait to the end of the year here to see what everyone comes up with. I, I know these are tougher times here and it's not nearly as much fun doing this on Zoom, but I'm really glad we can keep this, uh, this fantastic program alive and running, and, and not just alive and running, but continuing to thrive. Students, I hope you're excited. $50,000 on the line. Of course, uh, Holly will tell you later how it comes with great strings attached, but that's only so we can uh, help you bring those dreams that you come up with to reality. And uh, my thanks to all the faculty. I see almost all of you are here tonight, which is fantastic. And uh, thanks for supporting the students. I know you have a lot of fun with this too, but I know it takes a lot of the time and, and energy just as much. So much appreciated. Uh, the students, the sky's the limit here. Uh, you know, we, we've seen some tremendous projects over the years, great ideas and, and uh, you know, just a couple examples. I know we always love to pull out our shining examples, but I think it's important to see what's possible. We had a team come out of uh, plastics engineering a few years back, non-spec and, and there, 
they really wanted to help and they wanted to um, <clears throat> help design and build and give out, uh, give uh, provide to the public a low cost prosthetic uh, and specifically for children. And the idea being that the prosthetic would grow with the child. So it would cut down on uh, how often you would have to be refitted and, and so forth and therefore a big savings. Uh, they won the challenge here about uh, seven years ago and uh, they've gone over uh, off and uh, they're uh, <clears throat> marketing and selling their product in uh, all across the globe, uh, specifically in India. Uh, they're doing uh, India and Rwanda doing amazing things. They have an office in iHub and they've they've raised over a million dollars through national competitions and investors. So just a great story. It started with their desire to help people and it's turned into a, a great little business, uh, maybe not so little anymore. Another more recent story is Invisaware. Uh, again, a couple of folks that came out of it just happened to come out of engineering, but they've gotten a lot of help from across campus, uh, electrical engineering students originally. Uh, you may be familiar with this. In 2016, they won the Innovation Technology Solution in Difference Maker. Uh, and, and the idea there is they have a technology that uh, with the push of a button, uh, you can uh, send a, an emergency message out to your contact list. Uh, but their goal was to, to, again, helping people, but uh, they wanted it to be an attractive piece of jewelry or, or otherwise, uh, you know, uh, bracelets, those types of things and highly successful. They just eclipsed a million dollars in sales this year. They've got office space in Lowell. Uh, with employing 10 people. Uh, you may have seen them on the news uh, because they've saved lives with their product. And recently just signed a deal with ADT, which is really exciting. So uh, just, just tremendous to see. Those are just two examples of numerous. I mean, those are that have done amazing things, but we have plenty of stories of people who've made an impact close on campus, in town, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and so think big, but Think about how you want to make a difference. It's not named difference maker uh, haphazardly. It, it's it's in the mantra of of, uh, of UMass Lowell, where we want to make a difference in the world, uh, whether it's locally or globally. So, again, sky's the limit. Tonight's an uh, an opportunity to learn about it, meet some faculty mentors, hopefully meet some other students. But you'll have time throughout the semester to uh, sort of acquire your team and, and Holly and her team and students are going to help you with that too. So ask questions, reach out, get excited, get involved. This is one of those things that you do outside of class that uh, really can be, uh, it can be put a great mark on your career at Lowell and, 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 uh, and a great way to have it just adding to your education. So with that, Holly, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you, Brent, and thank you, Neil, for your help tonight and, and much appreciated with everything else you do. Thanks. Thank you, Provost Hartman, for your support and for your time this evening. We all know how busy you are, so really appreciate uh, those words. Uh, so next up, I would like to introduce two of our Difference Maker co-op students, Adam and Yiharn. So these students have been working with Difference Maker for about three years now, and they're going to do a presentation and share more about Difference Maker and the Idea Challenge. Hello, everybody. My name is Yiharn Hoot, and I am the student intern at Difference Maker. The Difference Maker program, as Holly said, is a program here at UMass Lowell that supports students with their entrepreneurial ideas. Um, we support students from all different majors. So whether you're an engineering student, a health student, psychology, we are here for you. To top it off, we're also here for students of all years. So whether you're brand new to UMass Lowell or you're getting a graduate or even a doctorate degree, but you're interested in the program, we are here to support you as well. What we do is that we support students with ideas. So an idea for a new product, a new service, a nonprofit, or even a club. And we help you make that idea into a reality. Even if you do not have an idea, but you would like to get involved in the program, we will help you with that as well. On campus, our office is located on North Campus on Leiden Library next to Starbucks. If we were on campus, this would be a great space for you and your teams to work. It's a nice quiet space with whiteboards, smart boards, and computers for you and your team to use when just developing your idea. We also have a variety of mentors and faculty advisors that Howie mentioned before. One of my favorite things about the mentor program is when previous Difference Maker teams 
graduate, build their companies, and then come back to share their experiences and advice with you. So it's really nice because you have student teams who know what it's like to be in the process while in school and balancing you know, work and all this stuff, but they have the advice to give to you. We also have a variety of workshops throughout the semester. Our workshops are geared to help you further solidify your idea to make sure your idea is at its greatest potential. We also have a team building platform. So if you're looking for new team members or you have no idea, but you're interested in joining a team, our team maker platform is a great resource to check out. Um, in terms of funding, so right now this spring semester, we have our $50,000 idea challenge. One of the great things about this funding is that if you win funding from Difference Maker, that money is 100% yours. So you don't have to pay it back with interest or anything like that. If the money that you use for your product is your money. If you're interested in getting organized with programs outside of UMass Lowell, we can help you set you up with them, such as e all which is a nonprofit in Lowell that helps startups. The Riverhawk Experience Distinction, also known as RED, is a program here on campus. So it's kind of like a minor, but with less work than a minor. Instead of taking all those classes that a minor needs, for this one, you take two courses and two experiences related to leadership, entrepreneurship, global engagement, and community engagement. Once you take all of these courses and experiences, you will get the red designation on your transcript and you can use it for like future job interviews and things like that. For more information about this, check out uml.edu slash red to learn more. And here are some examples of some past student teams. Biobubbler noticed that in developing nations such as like in Africa and Haiti, there's not always access to clean drinking water. This is an issue because you need water to survive. And if you don't have clean drinking water, it can be really hard to go on with your day-to-day -day activities. So this team decided to create Biobubbler, which is a way to clean water without using any electricity or chemicals. And it eliminates the bacteria in the water as well. With the funding that they won from Difference Maker, they have actually created a prototype for their product and have even been able to travel to Haiti to test it out. Freshbeats noticed that Lowell is an amazing, diverse community known for music, food, and education. But there's no place in Lowell where all of these things combine into one. So Savannah Marshall decided to come up with Freshbeats, which is a three-in-one food truck venue. On the food truck itself, she serves fresh, local, healthy food for anyone to enjoy. And on the back of the truck, there's a flap that opens up. Um, when the flap opens up, live bands actually go on there to play live music. So while you're waiting in line for your food to be ready, you're also accompanied with the beautiful fresh live music being played right on the truck. When she's not serving fresh food or playing music, she actually provides free music lessons to children and students in the community. So it's a nice three-in-one food truck. Difference Maker was founded in 2013, and since then, it's had a huge impact. Um, after graduation, 38 actual companies were formed by teams, along with 10 real-life patents. Additionally, with the funding that Difference Maker has provided for teams, an additional $5 million were raised by our student teams. So as you guys have been able to gather from everything that Yihan has shared and that Folly and Provost Hartman have been sharing so far, there are an insurmountable amount of benefits to being involved with the Difference Maker program here at UMass Lowell. Um, not even this slide that is full of um, benefits can even describe everything that you guys can gain for being involved with the program. You guys are gonna get access to everything from high level networking opportunities, um, meeting new friends, feeling more connected to UMass Lowell. You guys are gonna learn soft skills that are gonna give you a competitive advantage come graduation. So that when you guys are going to, you know, maybe gain job opportunities, learn to dress for success, how to market yourself and your ideas. So not only are you guys gonna be gaining funding to pursue an idea that you're passionate about, but even if you don't end up winning the biggest prize at the competitions or going to the pitch off, the skills and the knowledge that you guys are gonna learn along the airtight pathway that we have developed for you guys to take any idea you've had for a product or a service or an invention is not only gonna develop that idea itself, but you as a student and as a person as well. 
So here's a little bit of a summary of this semester coming up here in the spring. Um, so we're going to have our applications due for the 50k idea challenge. And then we're going to be running you guys through some workshops once you've signed up with us. And all this will go boil down to our main two pitch competitions. Um, so as it says here, the application for the deadline for the 50k idea challenge is February 12th, which is about 10 days away. Now, I know what you're thinking 10 days is kind of daunting. It's soon. But trust me when I say we're not looking for a three to five page explanation on how you guys are going to change the world. Right. So all we really need from you guys is a few sentences about what it is you're passionate about and the help that you're going to need. Right. So you guys telling us the majors that you think you want to get involved on your team if you don't have one already. And we're going to help you guys from there on out. One of the reasons why it's super important to highlight the workshop series is because from all of our teams that have become wildly successful through Difference Maker, some of the best feedback we have heard is that they attribute a lot of that success to the knowledge that they found um, from the workshop series. So during our workshops, we're going to be having guest speakers and mentors that are going to come in and teach you guys everything from you know identifying and solidifying the problem that it is that you're passionate about to assessing the opportunity and the market size that it is that you're looking to go into um, helping you develop your idea plan and your business model and kind of boil that all down to one feasible solution in a five to ten minute pitch so that when you go to the pitch competition you feel confident that you know your idea is secure um, your problem and your solution is feasible and you guys have that confidence instilled in you to stand in front of the judges and explain why you know your your problem means something and why your solution is going to matter to solve that. So as I said, we have two main pitch competitions um, during this semester. The first one is the preliminary pitch off. You can think of the preliminary pitch off as like the semifinal competition. So after you submit your idea plan, if you're admitted to the semifinal, um, the preliminary pitch off, you're going to be um, pitching in front of a room of judges. And if you get through that, you'll go to our final 50K idea challenge, whereas we've kind of uh, mentioned before, you'll be pitching for different prizes, um, at least $2,000. Something that I also want to highlight with the pitch events is that for you guys as students and for your ideas and your teams, um, even if you don't make it to the pitch competition and win the biggest prize from Difference Maker, you guys still have an opportunity to not only, as I said, learn about yourself as a learner and as a person, but also develop a lot of your skills. Um, Beyond the funding, the resources that we have here at UMass Lowell um, and at Difference Maker to kind of, you know, project your guys' ideas and, and kickstart um, and get you guys networking with not only our competitions, but also competitions around the greater area. Um, those things can help you take your idea just as far as some of our teams that win the biggest prizes at our final competitions. So one thing I also love to highlight is that if you guys don't have an idea of your own, or if you do have an idea of your own, but maybe you're a freshman and you don't know anyone yet, or you know you just um, can't haven't found a team yet, we have an online team maker platform where you guys can basically go on and see all the teams that have listed their ideas, but they're looking for teammates. I'm going to give everyone in the Zoom call a little bit of homework. So if you guys go home today and just take five or ten minutes um, after the event or sometime in the next week, and if you guys just want to check out, I guarantee that everyone in this Zoom call has at least one skill that one of those teams on our Team Maker platform is looking for. And you guys might be able to find um, a team that suits your fancy, that interests you, and then we'll help you from there to get involved. Um, also today, when we go off into our breakout rooms, you know, if you guys came here with an idea you were, you know, passionate about, or, you know, you might meet someone who has another idea, you guys still, like I said, you have 10 days um, to get involved and to put in that minuscule application to get you guys started. And, you know, we'll help you from there. With that being said, um, if you guys have any burning questions after tonight's event or tomorrow, definitely email us at differencemaker at uml.edu. Um, you know, friend us on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Um, that's our Instagram and Twitter handle, um, as well as our web link. You guys can also just, you know, type in Difference Maker UML on Google and we'll be the first thing that pops up. Um, but with that being said, um, you know, echoing what everyone else said, thank you so much for all being here tonight. We are so excited to get you guys started and get you rolling. Um, if there's any questions you have on powering down the presentation, we'll be definitely, you know, glad to answer as we're able. Thank you, Adam, and you hear on that presentation was really, really great. A lot of great information there. Um, so right now, I just want to take a couple of minutes. Are there any questions about Difference Maker or the Idea Challenge at this point? If you don't feel comfortable speaking verbally, you can always chat in the question. Um, are we allowed to work with students in other colleges? 
Oh, absolutely. Yes. Good question. So that's something that Difference Maker really supports and encourages uh, of building up a team, an, inter an interdisciplinary team of diverse majors. So if you have an idea, let's say for a health-based product, but you're an engineer, you should probably get a health major on board and maybe a business student on board. And we're here to help you connect you with those other students. I also, I also met like other universities, um, like I, like someone, I know someone from another university that I have an idea with. Yes. So good question. So yes, uh, as long as the team leader and the majority of the team are UMass Lowell students, you can partner with students from other universities. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? I have a question. Yes. Regarding adding um, teammates to your team, how do you go about that? Do you guys take care of it or do we manually do it? So you can manually do it in the online application. So if you've already applied and you're the team leader, you can log in and you can add team members that way. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there a limit to how many uh, people can be on your team? There is no limit. We've had teams of one all the way up to five or six. Um, so I think within that range, we've seen works really well. And thank you, Yihan just shared the Team Maker platform website for everybody. Holly, I see a couple of questions. Um, uh, Max Charles asked, uh, when you apply, are you allowed to do one idea only or can you submit multiple ideas? So you can be the team leader of one idea, but you can be a part of multiple ideas. So as a team leader, it's a little bit more of a responsibility. You only have so much time in your day. So if you're leading a team and an idea, you can do one, but there have been, you know, you might have some friends who are submitting an idea and you want to support them and be on their team and sort of help them through. And that's okay. Thank you, Steve. And this is Steve Tello, the man I introduced earlier. Uh, Steve, did you want to say anything about Difference Maker? I, I, Holly, I think you and, and the team here have done a great job and given these uh, students a great picture of Difference Maker. I'm just really excited to see everybody taking time. I know it uh, was a kind of a crazy day with the snowstorm. I bet a lot of you all had classes still. Uh, and the fact that you have some time out tonight to take part of this uh, means a whole lot to me and, and the other people who support the program. So thank you all for being here. Thank you, Steve. Okay. All right, any last uh, questions? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Yes. So, uh, so basically, uh, I was interested in to knowing, I don't know whether it's the right time to ask, ask this question or not. So if my idea is well researched, from the practical field and if I can come up with a problem that has statistical figures, but uh, my idea, the business model I have developed is not complete. So I need technical uh, or knowledge help from the professors of the Manning School of Business uh, or to develop that business model professionally. Uh, so is that any kind of help that, can, that I will be able to get during the workshop or to, before I pitch my idea? That's my first question. And my second question is, uh, if, I, if I'm willing to solve a problem that is uh, in the sustainable development goal to 2030, so uh, like few of the goals, few of the SGD goals are interrelated. So the, will it be more uh, satisfying to go with one goal and solve only one problem or solve a problem that can uh, fulfill a uh, few goals together? Yes, thank you for those questions. So I'll, I'll start with the first one as far as the business model and developing a business model. We understand that all students may not have that knowledge and that's okay. As Adam mentioned, the idea challenge is just having a well thought out and researched idea. Uh, additionally, workshop three actually focuses on business models and developing business models. And we have some guest speakers that will be um, actually presenting the business model canvas and helping you and other students think through that. Uh, and then I had talked about the faculty fellows. So if you need help in the business school, we can connect you with faculty and the faculty fellow within that school to get you that support. Um, as far as your second question, 
what we've seen with Difference Maker is it's really good to sort of begin solving one problem and have, have a focus on one goal and one problem first, and then spanning beyond that. So I don't know if that helps answer your question, but I would begin tackling one problem and one goal first. And then as you move through the program, if you get funding, we have a, a summer boot camp that you can attend, and then we can help push you forward to solve more problems and pursue more goals. Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, it looks like we have a couple of questions in the chat, so I'll answer these two questions. And then just because of time, um, I'm going to move forward after that. But if there are other questions, you can always reach out to us. Um, difference maker at uml.edu and I'm happy to uh, meet with you and answer your questions that way. Um, so hi professors and everyone I have a question. Does it need to prepare a proposal for presenting? Um, so we'll help you with that. So as far as the application that's due on February 12th, it takes about five minutes to complete. Look at the application more as a registration form basically saying, here's my idea, here's who I'm gonna be working with, just to sort of get your foot in the door so that we have you registered for the event. After that, that's when we push you forward and we give you help and support through the workshops uh, and meetings to actually develop a short proposal that we have a template for. It's just about two to three pages and the workshop series will help you develop that proposal as well as me and all of the faculty fellows here. So in order to apply, you do not need a proposal. You just need an idea uh, at that point. Uh, and then Max said, for the application, I'm assuming this idea has to be well thought out and detailed by the 12th. So I guess I sort of answer that question. No, it does not have to be well thought out and detailed at that point. It's more of a registration saying, here's what I'm interested in doing. And then as you work through the next couple of months up to April, that idea will become more concrete and more well thought out so that you're ready to present it to the judges and then for potential funding. Uh, and I guess one more question just came in, so I'll ask that one. Uh, is it okay if you have no team members and be the only one working on your idea? Uh, yes. So with Difference Maker, we do encourage interdisciplinary teams just because, like I mentioned before, if you have an idea for some type of health prototype uh, or product and you're an engineering major, you most likely will also need skills and expertise from health and probably business and other areas. So it's okay, we have had teams of one go through the program, but partnering up with people of different mindsets and skills will be beneficial. So the answer is yes, but we can help you connect you to other people if you're having a hard time finding team members. All right, so a lot of great questions. You're welcome. Uh, so a lot of great questions. Thank you for those. And again, if you have further questions, please do email differencemaker at uml.edu um, and we can help you think through or help you answer those questions. So now for the next part of the evening's event. Sorry about that, I lost my place. All right, so now this part of the event is really exciting because we have two real life Difference Maker student teams that have actually gone through the process and have been working on their ideas for a couple of years now. Um, so we have Ambulatory Innovations and then Benji Ball. So first I would like to welcome Michelle May Lu. So she was a health science major and she's gonna talk about her idea and her experience Difference Maker. So welcome, Michelle. Hi, Holly. Thank you for having me, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right. I'm just going to share with everyone um, a little quick presentation that I've made. Can everyone see this? Yes. Uh, it's not on presentation mode, so Let me... um, if you go down to the bottom, into the right, there's a little, oh, yes. Yes. All right. So 
Hi, everyone. Um, as Holly said earlier, I am Dr. Michelle Melu. I just recently graduated from UMass Lowell with my doctorate of physical therapy. Um, myself and the CEO of our company, Katie Muse, we both graduated from that program this summer. Um, then we also have a, two engineers on our team, um, Travis Cohen, Nick Draper, and then we have um, William Melu, who is kind of our marketing strategist. So we are actually an example of a team where we just started with two health majors who knew nothing about business, but had an idea. So we came to Difference Makers. We started using the Team Maker um, application and it really helped us create the team that we have today. So the product that we're working on is called the Community Ambulation Tool Map. Um, basically, just to give you a summation of our company, Ambulatory Innovations, we are striving to create products for physical therapists to help um, seniors or anyone who's had a stroke or some sort of um, impairment or condition to be able to walk outside again, because a lot of patients find that they're able to walk on nice smooth floor because that's what they practice on at PT all day. But PTs don't have the right materials right now to be able to practice uh, making more realistic outdoor surfaces. So patients sometimes have a hard time being able to go to the beach or do gardening, things like that. So we're trying to help out with that. So this product, it's um, one square foot mat that simulates various outdoor terrains. The mats can interlock, as you can see in the picture, um, and it kind of looks like a puzzle piece. So that way it'll form a walkway that physical therapists can use inside of clinics safely um, to train their patients to be able to walk outdoors. The reason they can't work outdoors, it, there's just a whole bunch of different legal reasons on top of weather. There's just so many reasons why they need to be able to do this inside. It can be used for um, just balance training as well not just walking and it can help people who have ankle sprains or to something as um, severe as a traumatic brain injury. And so with this idea and moving along in the Difference Maker, we were able to uh, win the honorable mention prize in 2019. So some successes that we've had so far, we additionally from the honorable mention prize, we won the $5,000 Foley and Lardner Legal Services Prize, which you all, if you end up going through this whole process, um, that's something you may be able to apply for at some point. Um, we also got the $15,000 First Place Difference Maker Prize at UMass Little Convocation in 2019. Um, we also won Beantown Throwdown, which is a big MIT competition. Um, we've participated in i which is another program that you guys may or may not know about and you may hear about. Um, best biomedical device at UMass Lowell. So there's just a whole bunch of things that we've been able to apply for. And that's all because of Holly and Steve Tello and Tom O'Donnell, all the people at Difference Makers helping us out. Um, and then another fun thing was we were featured on um, a podcast, if you guys want to check that out. Um, we formed an S Corp. So in our real, like actual professional setting, we formed a corporation this past year. We filed a trademark for our business name and for our logo. Um, we also filed a non-provisional patent and we begin, uh, we began prototyping and collecting data from the nerve lab at UMass Lowell. And basically, hopefully we're gonna have some prototypes ready by the end of this month to actually start sending out to companies. I believe, oh, that, there we go. Uh, so challenges that we had along the way. Um, initially, we were having a hard time finding um, other team members to actually create a prototype. Um, but then because of the help from Team Maker, we found some people. Um, how to prototype, we were having difficulty with 3D, 3D printing and we are kind of actually still working on the perfect medium for our product. Um, and then funding as well. In the beginning, we were using our own money to try and make these prototypes, um, but it all pays off. If you put in a little, you get a lot in the long run. Um, and then through Difference Maker, we learned to develop a business model canvas. We knew 
me and Katie knew nothing about business before this. So we found this very helpful. Um, we also learned how to do non-biased customer discovery interviews to actually find out what our customer segment and our target market really desires and really wants. And fortunately for us, our product is something that is in demand. Um, and then connections with helpful mentors. So just from Difference Maker alone, we have so many um, mentors and resources now that uh, have been helping us along this whole time. Um, and Difference Makers is also great because they keep up with you. If you give to Difference Makers, like um, if you're just invested and you actually want this idea to take off, Difference Makers will give back to you. So they share information on grants and competitions. They ask you back like they asked us back. And if you just build a good relationship and network well, the sky's the limit. Um, Difference Maker really is a great way to build your resume for future career opportunities as well. Ooh. And then, so these are just our contact information. If you want to hear more from us directly about our idea, uh, you can check out our website that we've created and all of our social media handles. Difference Maker uh, mentions us sometimes if we're doing something. So yeah, if any of you have any questions about how Difference Maker has helped us, um, just the product in general, go ahead. And then if you have anything else, you can just message us or email us as well. Thank you, Michelle. It was a great presentation. And I know we stay close, closely in touch, but it's just really great to see everything that you and your team have accomplished uh, since winning Difference Maker. So it's really exciting stuff. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. It's been a while. <laughs> I know. Uh, are there any questions for Michelle at this point? Any questions? Dave, I see your hand. Hi. <laughs> oh, you're muted. Oh, I, I, I was unmuted and muted. Hi, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you too. Great, great presentation. And it's, it's really exciting just to see, uh, see your success. Um, I'm curious if you could give people one tip in, in preparing uh, for this competition, what would it be? Um, for this particular competition, I would say really take in as much as you can during those workshops and create a team and find people that have the skills that you might not necessarily have. If it was just me and Katie the whole time, I, I don't think we would have made it too far. But since we found people who can actually make our vision come to life and help us in other avenues while we had strong points in other areas, um, we've made a really great team. So I think the teamwork really makes the dream work. So how did you find those people? Um, it was a combination of the team maker uh, website and also just um, friends and connections. And then talking to different like professors, uh, we were really looking for engineers. Uh, so we were reaching out to the engineering school and doing like in person presentations to try and get people excited about our idea. Um, so yeah, I would say try team maker first, reach out to friends. And then if it's still, you're not really getting too many bites, um, just start going to the, the source. Find like a professor who specializes in this and see if they can find a student that is interested. Great, thank you and keep it up. You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you again, Michelle, for being here and for that presentation. Um, so next up, I would like to introduce Edward Moranti, who is from the business Benji Ball. And he is an education major and also uh, in fine arts. So Edward, welcome. Thank you. Um, can you hear me OK? Yes. Awesome. So I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Yep. And can you see it? Yes, it just awesome. will. Um, you can just put it in presentation mode. Presentation mode. Okay. All right. And hi, my name is Edward. Um, I'm with Benji Ball. And the idea was initially founded by Benjamin, who is a business major. Uh, I graduated last semester uh, with a 
degree in journalism, professional writing, but I used to be in the College of Education, uh, which is the main reason why Benjamin invited me on to join Benji Ball. Uh, by itself, Benji Ball is a new and innovative way to play baseball. Um, what, and we achieve this by using a new 10-sided ball with the outcome of every at bat, as well as a new bat, which is more similar to a cricket bat, which allows for a larger hidden area but it still retains the traditional baseball handle um, just so it's easier for children or people with disabilities to hold. Now with that idea, Benjamin and I won first place in the RISC campus-wide difference maker competition, uh, winning the first place prize of $6,000. Um, but we also have achieved success elsewhere, such as the difference maker engineer and prototype competition where we won $2,500. But I myself was also able to present at the College of Education High T, which allowed me to network and meet the principal of a charter school over in Nashua, the Micro Society Charter Academy, where we showcased Benji Ball. We had the kids play with Benji Ball for a bit. We got all their ideas. And once Benji Ball launches, we're going to be able to have Benji Ball as an official sport at the Micro Society Charter Academy. Um, so it's just with Difference Maker. We were able to just expand and showcase Benji Ball in so many places. We were even able to get the Miracle League to play test it as well. Now, we also have achieved an LLC with Benji Ball, and our patent is still pending, which is unfortunate, um, but hopefully we're able to get it. Now, prior to COVID, Benji Ball was set to launch before Christmas, but since factories have shut down, we have been pushed back and delayed. Um, our manufacturer has reopened their factory, so we are hoping to get a launch sometime in the summer, uh, but that's still up in the air just because of COVID. Now, with Difference Maker, we have been helped tremendously by getting a lot of networking opportunities. Our mentors, such as Roger and Ray, are from Invisiware, previous Difference Maker winners as well, and they've been tremendously helpful with talking to us about how to ship Benji Ball and how to get all that shipping out there, just because shipping is one of the more difficult parts of anything, especially with Amazon and everyone and stuff at their door the next day, um, especially for me and Benjamin, it's not something that's very viable. Um, but with the manufacturing process as well, we learned a lot of things about this, which is you nearly need to compromise a lot when it does come to your vision and how you want stuff to come to. Uh, fruition and that's part of the reason why Benji Ball hasn't fully launched yet um, just because so many manufacturers have cut us off last minute uh, in this one case Benjamin drove to Maine for five hours in expectations of finalizing a deal with the manufacturer uh, but they backed out last minute and wanted to give him reason why and that's one of the biggest challenges of any idea and it's one of the things where a difference maker does come in handy just because you do get those networking opportunities to learn uh, more about the manufacturing process uh, but a lot of it is really just trial and error. Now, we also have our contact information here. So if you ever want to get in contact with Benji Ball, it's Benji Ball for All on all of our social medias. Um, but overall, I just really want to drill in that Difference Maker is and does contribute a lot to past and previous teams. Uh, tremendously, they give you a lot of resources with the team maker platform and the ability to go throughout the different colleges just to get a perfect team. Uh, Benjamin, as I said, picked me just because I do excel and I worked with kids with disabilities and I was an education major. So I know all about the, children, the way children work and how to work with them and get into schools. Um, but since he was a business major, uh, he wasn't able to get all that information. So one of the biggest things about Difference Maker is you need the ability to work through college campuses and the ability to work in different areas. Um, so finding the best team is something that the Team Maker platform can assist with. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Edward. Another great presentation this evening. And it's really nice to see how you and Ben have worked on Benji Ball uh, since winning funding. So are there any questions right now for Edward? about his idea or the um, idea challenge? I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Edward, great job. And uh, it, I can't wait to see the real thing. I guess I'm, I'm rooting for you. I want to try you. that out. 
I want to try it out in the quad over in Southwick there and see how it plays. Um, how did you use the prize money? So as of right now, Benjamin hasn't used that much of the prize money. Um, he is intending to use it to pay for sort of, sort of more of the pad and fund in just so we can get everything solidified. Um, but since we haven't officially manufactured anything, he's really just been holding it onto it. So how did you get, I mean, you've done a lot of work. You've done development. I think you filed uh, for a patent on this. Um, you've done a lot of things. How'd you get so far without money? So a lot of that is due to networking and like the connections you make. Uh, for example, um, Benjamin's uncle knows a patent lawyer who's really been just doing a lot of this pro bono. Um, and it's just a lot of the, that essentially luck where we haven't had a, the need to spend a lot of the money. Um, most of the stuff where we do get the samples is relatively cheap where we're not um, touching a lot of the large funding. Um, just because prior to this, Benjamin was working on it a little throughout high school. Um, the main thing that Difference Maker did was it gave us the ability to network and get that extra funding when we do finally need it. Um, but for some of the prototypes, he has already pre-funded this prior to that. Thank you. Yes, I recently talked to Ben actually, and he said that because of COVID-19, all the manufacturers shut down for the year um, that he was trying to work with. And as they begin opening up, they hope to begin manufacturing. So um, he asked if they could keep their funding, a, a good chunk of their funding for that. Um, so hopefully we can see that soon. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thank you again, Michelle and Edward, both for being here and sharing your ideas and your experiences with Difference Maker. Oh, it looked like someone just had their hand raised. Now I lost them. Um, so we are going to move forward just because um, of time. But again, please email differencemaker at uml.edu and I can make sure to get those questions answered for you. So the next part of the presentation um, or the last part of the event, I should say, is the fun ideation activity. So this activity is really meant to help you begin clarifying and developing a problem or an idea that you want to submit to Difference Maker, as well as beginning to think about solutions to that potential problem. So we're going to do some breakout rooms and have some faculty mentors there to help you uh, think through those uh, problems and those solutions. So for the next part of the event, I would like to introduce Dr. Brent Schell from the Zuckerberg College of Health Sciences and Dr. Neil Shortland from Fine Arts, Humanity and Social Sciences. And they're gonna be introducing and facilitating the activity. So thank you very much, Brent and Neil. Happy to be here. Well, so glad to see everyone so excited about this. It's wonderful to get to, to work on some new ideas with you all. So what we're gonna do in a few minutes is we're going to split up into breakout rooms. And what's going to happen is, is we have facilitators for each of the rooms. I um, mean, the rooms are going to mirror the topics that we polled you about at the beginning. We polled you that way we could have the rooms all set up and ready to go for you. Um, so once we descri describe the activity to you, then we're going to give you the opportunity to go into the breakout room that best matches the idea you think you may wanna pursue. You're not signing up for anything definitely, right? It's just a space where you can discuss your idea with other people. Um, so if you feel like that room isn't really matching what you'd like, you can always switch to the room that you think may match better. So that's what we're going to do in a few minutes and I'll help you get transitioned into those rooms. Um, but now we're going to have Dr. Shortland tell us a little bit about the activity that we're going to do and explain to us how we're going to develop an idea and then hopefully come to some kind of solution for that idea. Thanks Brent, appreciate that buddy. Um, Brent, I'm sorry, I've just noticed that the, the models behind you are quite creepy if you don't know what your area of expertise is. Just kind of a human head and a heart and kind of half a body in the background. So I have that a skull was- too, so it's like yeah, Halloween. <laughs> exactly, there we go. Um, all right, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I always appreciate the opportunity to uh, assist with difference makers. So this activity is kind of a, a trial run, if you will, of kind of working your way through the process from kind of, we, we, we've grouped you into these kind of thematic rooms, um, but what makes a kind of difference when it comes to difference makers and, and, and teams that do well is the ability to refine down from kind of the, the big problem to the tangible solution, and then to be able to not only identify kind of 
who is in need of this kind of solution and why, but almost then quantify kind of the benefits that you bring and kind of what those benefits can be. Maybe it's cost, maybe it's human happiness, maybe it's human health care, whatever that benefit is. It's about working your way through that from kind of a, a global societal challenge to something that's real, something that we can psychologically or physically hold in our hand, wrap our head around and, and have you convince us in a, in, a, in a finite amount of time why it's so important and who's going to benefit from it. So what you're going to get when you go into each of the breakout rooms is we've got a quick kind of a, a quick toolkit kind of workshop there that starts you off with kind of the what's the problem, right? What's this? You're in this area. Maybe it's, you know, social justice. Maybe it's innovative technologies. But but what's this problem that you think is the one that you need to invest in? OK, who's the audience? Right. So who is you? Who are you? Who are you helping? And then also, who do you need? Who are the gatekeepers? Who are you selling this to? And then what benefit are they going to get from that? And more importantly, how do the benefits differ depending on which kind of level of customer you're dealing with? These are just questions you need to be able to ask yourself because you need to know the answers in order to get people motivated to invest in your ideas, to trust your innovation, and to kind of encourage your process as you go through. And these are ideas and activities that all of the successful difference maker um, platforms have gone through. So it's nothing formalized, but there's this toolkit that we've developed for you that just kind of allows you to jot down these ideas and kind of answer pointed questions, the idea, the problem, the customer, the benefit, and kind of working our way through. And it's a skill. And it's kind of why we give you so many opportunities to practice this is coming up with solutions and articulating the benefits of those solutions. These are, these are skills. You know, these are, these are muscles that you need to be working, constantly trying to adapt, innovate, think of these ideas. So let's get started. Let's kind of put these things together. Let's come up with some innovative ideas and let's work through the process in our rooms. And um, like right. Brent said, we'll, uh, we'll have a few faculty experts in there to help you out. All right. Um, so I'm going to send the facilitators uh, we'll to the rooms and, uh, and then I will help you all get to the rooms too. And you can use the worksheets in order to work through um, everything that we need to do to kind of get an idea started. So I'm gonna right. go ahead and open those rooms. All right, I think that everyone is back in the main room now. Um, so what we're going to do is if, if someone wants to share uh, and tell us a little bit about the problem that you discussed in your room and maybe talk about some potential solutions that you discussed as well, uh, we're happy to give you a few moments to have the floor. So would anyone like to tell us a little bit about their idea or just a little bit about what you discussed in your room? I'll, I'll start. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, so in our room, we discussed the problem of chronic injury and uh, how we might approach that. So that's the problem. What else do you want me to talk about? Uh, so if you're, if you're thinking about chronic injury, what were some of the, the potential solutions you came up with to help uh, to ease that, that pain of having chronic uh, injury or some kind of chronic condition? Yes, so the solution was um, stem cell therapy. All right. All right. Did you have any, any more depth to that? Or did you just have the, the, the starting point there that that sounds like the best way to, to, to pursue some kind of um, easement of that pain? It sounds like you've got some help in the background. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no <laughs> he's, he's right here. Um, so we, um, we, that's, that's definitely a rabbit hole that we could talk about for days. We didn't specify what kind of injury specifically. Uh, it would yeah, it was this was my idea that I pitched. It's yeah. it's mostly like chronic, but I mean you could expand it into things like people that you know like have like osteoporosis, osteopenia, people that have like a lot of muscle atrophy, and all that kind of stuff. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Would anyone else like to share what they what they worked on in their room? That's 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 quite a start. Um, so, did anyone have anything in, in like consumer products or like innovative technology? One of those groups have something interesting that you'd like to share. Brent, I can jump in if you like from the on behalf of the other category, the elusive other category. Um, we had two very concrete ideas in our in our group that were very, very interesting um, in terms of juxtaposing the kind of the need for both, because one was a, 
a need that I think is immensely uh, resonates immensely with a very large population of people. And one was a need that resonates with a very finite group, a very small group, but their view of the need is immense. And so I think it's an interesting kind of challenge there. So the first one that we kind of talked through um, was about providing basically physical um, spaces to support mental health of students. And one of the things that we know from the business world is they're creating spaces that help with innovation, right? But this idea of it being a, uh, of kind of helping with, with coping with mental health isn't one that we really deal with. So we discussed the kind of that that has such widespread appeal and is so important. Um, you know, that that's very, you know, very compelling narrative. Um, but we talked about kind of the issue there of multiple customers. So you have the university, the students who need it, but they maybe the customers, but not the gatekeepers, right? The gatekeepers would be the university leadership who make decisions around kind of, you know, what campus spaces look like. Um, so that was really interesting. And then the second was a, was a fascinating idea, um, helping people um, who buy luxury items take better care of them, which to the everyday person may not seem like the kind of the, well, that's, you know, a million people and that will solve a million people's problems. But for people who own luxury items, their care is what is, is as important as the purchase. So it's a really niche market, but it's a really kind of concrete and definable expensive market for a small number of people. So I thought that there was a very interesting juxtaposition between kind of the broad universal appeal and then a very unique appeal and both I think were very equal but for different reasons so we kind of straddled those two ideas in our other category yeah and and all of that sounds amazing um, and if you like the idea of, of figuring out who is the user of your project product versus who you would pitch it to exactly the kind of things that professor shortly was talking about i highly encourage you to come to the workshops because that's exactly the kind of topics that get covered um, both developing your idea and figuring out how to implement it who actually uses it versus who would actually pay you to make this idea happen um, so it looks like in, in chat, we have one more person who would like to pitch their idea. Um, so we'll have one more person pitch it, and then we will wrap it up in, for the evening. So would you like Hi. to go ahead? Hi, my name is Sanskriti. So my idea is to, has technically been pitched in the fall competition. Uh, it's Wonder Wheel. So the, the, the short of it is that wheelchairs, there are, there are devices called wheelchair power assist that essentially work so that you can use a manual wheelchair as a manual wheelchair or as a power chair. And those have a lot of benefits, such as people who cannot get a power chair covered by insurance, people who need it for only long distances, but still want to maintain some kind of integrity of muscle. So they want to still wheel themselves over short distances, but need help when they're going across campus. So the devices exist on market, but they are all extremely expensive. So we are working on making a cost-effective version of that, that also meets some other needs that are smaller within it. So we are looking for anyone who's interested, but particularly business majors, if anyone wants to. Oh, thank you. I, someone just, I think a professor reached out. Yes, I would, I would love to reach out to you. I'll, I'll save your email. But, uh, if any business student wants to reach out or any other student who's interested in this idea, please reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds like a wonderful idea. That's that's definitely a market that I, I have never thought about it. But as soon as you started explaining it, it, it made perfect sense and it clicked. So that's wonderful. Um, so she is going to post her email in the chat, I believe. Um, and that way you can reach out and get in contact with her. Or also remember that in Zoom, you can private message someone. So if you're interested and you'd like to just go ahead and, and send a message off now, you can do that as well, too. Um, actually, we, we still have a couple more minutes. So would anyone else like to present what they discussed? Or, or if you have any more questions, we're happy to go through those as well. Um, anyone else want to tell us about uh, what you had, what ideas you had? Yeah, I will. <laughs> um, so um, mine was um, originally called the International Student Homestay Product Program. But uh, Mrs. Iman, and I hope I'm saying your name right, I'm sorry, just gave me a brilliant name which is home away from home. And I just, I love the name. Um, so the purpose of my program will be to have international students live with local hosts, or I should say current UML students, um, which is famously aligned with the idea of a foreign exchange students. 
Um, the app will be created to have international students keep in touch with a UML faculty member to ensure that their living conditions are up to the university standards. And um, they would only be staying with this UML like student family over long breaks, so spring, summer. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I am with the idea right now. But. <laughs> That sounds like a wonderful start. And that is a really good name, right? That's an excellent, that's yeah, a really clever name. So that, that sounds wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, could you tell us a little bit, um, you described the solution. Um, could you tell us just a little bit more uh, about the problem? How did you um, come to identify that problem uh, since that's just such a, an interesting idea? Okay, so um, please excuse me. I am reading from something I wrote a while back, but um, so um, each semester we close our schools, dining halls and centers and depart from our campus to our various loved ones. And barricaded in the four walls of a dorm room sits an international student who must endure the change in scenery and livelihood. And since um, our dining halls remain closed, their only option is Grubhub, which contains limited amount of food and quite often it's repetitive. Um, not only are they cut ties from their family members abroad, but they must endure summer and winter alone. And just that idea of loneliness is not something that any human should endure because as uh, humans, we are social animals. So I just think the idea of having um, a student live with a UML, you know, student family will be very beneficial to our school and also to the international students just so that they feel a little bit at home. You know. So. Yeah, it sounds like you've 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 already put a lot of thought on this. You've got you've got a lot written out. You've got a really solid foundation to work off of. Um, I think that it's a great idea that you can expand on. I think that coming to the workshops is a great place to where you can make sure that you have everything set up to to give the best presentation on that possible. Um, if you're looking for team members, um, yes, I am. <laughs> post your email in chat as well. Um, that way, uh, people can get in touch with you if the if the, your idea resonated with them. Uh, but it sounds like you have a wonderful start. You've identified a problem, and you've got uh, an, an elegant solution um, to help make people have their home away from home. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Iman. I appreciate you. All right. Did anyone else want to share for just a moment? Can I go ahead? Yeah, sure. Okay. So basically, I came up with this idea is that the problem was uh, in uh, in the United States, small and, small and medium scale businesses, uh, as well as uh, in the third world countries, uh, businesses do not have much fun to spend on R&D and they are, uh, they're given uh, pretty uh, limited loans for a very short period of time, which makes it inadequate for spending in research and development. So only the top, only the businesses, those are uh, able to generate high profits actually grow and they tend to succeed in the market. And it's very difficult to uh, defeat those giant conglomerates. So what I came up with is a, is a private research farm that will accommodate research to this research and development to this small and medium scale businesses in the United States, as well as in the third world countries. And we will be able to eradicate those Chinese, cheap Chinese technologies uh, and their research products. And we'll be able to make uh, the whole world. That, that's the vision of the idea. But slowly we will try to grasp uh, little by little, the third world countries, as well as the whole United States, to provide them with research and development at a very cheaper cost, at, at least one hundredth of the cost of what m most uh, giant conglomerates spend. So, uh, uh, so uh, like the problem that our idea was to uh, generate solutions by taking problems from these third world countries, research on them. Uh, and a team of professors, scientists, and researchers will be working on them in the United States. They will provide the design and the solution, and it will be manufactured and produced in those third world countries so that third, those third world countries can benefit by themselves by generate, by producing those, by manufacturing those products. But they will, the, the consumers in those third world countries, as well as consumers in the United States, who, who buy from small and medium scale businesses will be able to benefit from world-class research, research and development products. So yeah, that was the idea. 
Yeah, that, that sounds like an ambitious idea. It sounds like you've already put some some numbers to it and had some time to, to think about um, the scale of, and the scope of the idea. Um, it, it sounds like you've already put a lot of work into it. Um, you're welcome to post your email and chat too if people would like to, to get in touch and, and, and perhaps pursue that idea with you. Um, would anyone else like to, to share their idea? I think we've got enough time for, for one more person to, to share their idea. And then after that, we'll wrap up. I'll go. I, oh. Uh, oh, I, I guess you go. Now you can go. You can play oh, rock, paper, scissors for it. I, I, I always lose rock, papers. <laughs> um, I guess I had an idea dealing with um, like marine life um, and dealing with the issues of pollution. That'd be the main issue or problem as I talked with the uh, mentor in our group. Um, I was mainly considering the idea of how we have a lot of plastic in our oceans, like metric tons full of them circling around like the Pacific and the Atlantic areas and just across the sea. So I was mainly considering an idea of using maybe a genetic alteration of plankton based breakdown, like with the polymers or the plastic specific and use like genetic sequencing or engineering to that matter and use them as like a way to passively degrade it as it goes. But fascinating. It's fascinating, but of course, a lot of R and D and research, but I like the concept. That's what I thought would be good. The problem, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a new I, direction, right? When I think about that, I think a lot of people are tend to focus on collection, right? They did develop devices to collect those things, uh, not yeah. a, not a way to have passive degradation going on. I mean, yeah. you think of you know, you, you do. Uh, you, you have any other kind of waste, you put it somewhere and you hope it's going to degrade over time, but that's not something we think of once it, it reaches the ocean, it just stays there. Yeah. So a very clever idea. Um, if you want to, you can post your email in the chat too. And that way, if anyone else oh, is interested in pursuing of course. that, they uh, can get in touch with you. General student email or just pat, just private or I'll just do student, <laughs> sorry. That, that would likely be the, the one that they would, uh, they would recognize oh, it and probably want to connect with it. Probably the one you should submit to Difference Maker as well. All right. I think a few other people have mentioned things in the chat as well. If anyone is curious about some other team names or some other team ideas, uh, no worries. If you didn't get a chance to present your idea, there are plenty of opportunities to meet with other students. The, the workshops are a great place for that. And everyone can have an opportunity at the workshops to present their idea as well. Um, also remember that there is a, a work through Difference Maker to help you find teams. So you can contact Difference Maker. They can help get you in touch with people who would be able to um, share your idea um, and hopefully help you find some teammates as well. I'm going to let Holly go ahead and wrap things up, though. But thank you all so much for presenting your ideas. They sound really clever and really well thought out already. So I'm excited for the competition this season. Thank you, thank you Brent. Brent. Oh, Neil. Oh, I was just thanking Brent for his superb leadership. Yes, I was going to thank you both, um, especially Brent, for really organizing this and helping to facilitate the activity, as well as Neil and all of the other faculty fellows here this evening. It looks like a lot of great ideas came out of it. And a lot of connections were made through the chats and the presentation. So that's really great and will push you all forward. So I just wanted to leave you all with some next steps and sort of a call to action. So please just make sure that you get your application into the idea challenge by February 12th at 5 p.m. Um, it's okay if your idea changes a little bit or if it's not fully developed at that point. You may have team members that join your team that's okay. So nothing has to really be solidified at that point, but you do have to have somewhat of an idea um, for that application. So please just note February 12th at 5 p.m. And you can always reach out to me uh, or any of the faculty fellows, especially the ones within your college. A couple of students were chatting me separately, asking if they can connect with certain faculty in specific colleges, and absolutely. That's what we're here for, and especially the faculty fellows to really help guide you and to connect you to other faculty who may be able to help you as well. So feel free to uh, reach out to me or the faculty fellows. And then of course, the, the next step after applying to the idea challenge is attending the workshops so that you can meet new people and further your idea, excuse me, and further your idea. Um, and we will be bringing in guest speakers and mentors to all of those events. Um, and then I'm not going to show this video, but we do have a YouTube um, channel on Difference Maker as well as all of our other social media portals. So you can check out a lot of our events there. We have a student testimonial video that 
um, some of the students sort of put together to talk about their experiences through Difference Maker. There are examples of student pitches. So there's a lot of other resources for you to learn from on our YouTube channel. So you can certainly uh, check that out. And I just wanna leave you with the Difference Maker email address that you can reach out to at any time, our website that you can go to for more information, as well as all of our social media channels that you can follow and interact with to stay up to date on all Difference Maker events and opportunities. Um, so with that, I want to do one more huge thank you to Adam, um, who is the person behind the Zoom meeting. He has been really instrumental in making sure, you know, everything was set up and ran efficiently. And of course, Brent, uh, who really took the lead on the activity and helping with the breakout room. So thank you so much, Brent um, and Neil for also taking that leadership position with the activity. And of course, to all of our faculty fellows, we know how busy you are and we really appreciate your support. I saw a lot of the chats happening where some of the fellows, you know, will be helping some of the student teams, which is really exciting. So just thank you for everyone who's here this evening, um, as well as the co-op students for their support um, and all of the student attendees. Uh, hopefully Difference Maker can be a resource for you uh, and help you move your ideas forward. So I'll hang around for a little bit longer um, but with that, I would like to conclude the event. So thank you all and have a great evening.